everyone, welcome back to the channel and to today's video. You join me today in a place that many of you guys recommended I should check out in my last video. And here I am, a place called San Pakwan here in Hangdong. Could this be a great place to live at some point? I don't know, I'm gonna check it out in today's video. Join me right now though at the Semeng intersection. We're right at the tip of San Pakwan here in Hangdong and we've got it off to this side which is sort of going away to Hangdong and this side as well on the way to Chiang Mai. I think we're about five sets of traffic lights between here and Chiang Mai, so not including this, so six in all. But what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do a bit of a U-turn and I'm gonna head down in this direction on this side of the road just to see if I can see any suitable places to live. Can we see prices of anything? What's the area like in general? And could this be a great place to live at some point in the future? Here didn't flood apparently, and there are lots of available houses for sale at reasonable prices, and we're not too far away from the main Chiang Mai city. Now, before we do that though, we can go in this direction. Uh, San Pakwan does include this bit a lot as well, but for me, if I'm we're moving to this area, I'd want to be on that side of the road over there, so that would be pretty important. But uh, yeah, talking about the last video, I had a few people saying, well, oh, you can't find what you want in Chiang Mai, and I think you can. You, you can find something around the 4 million baht range 15 minutes from Chiang Mai. It's just a question of looking. And the house that we had in Sarapi, we had absolutely everything we wanted. It gave us everything. But now we have the flooding problem. So can we find somewhere else instead? Let's go and have a look, have a little bit of a walk around there and see what we can see. As we've got an aeroplane landing in Chiang Mai over there and the Semeng intersection is still queued. This is one of the things that you've got to be aware of in Chiang Mai if you're moving here. The traffic lights are red for ages and ages and ages. Green for ages as well, I suppose, but if you want to get into Chiang Mai and you want to avoid the traffic lights, where do, where do you move to? Sampai Wan could be an option. There are only five between here and there. Where I'm in Saripi though, it's zero. So is it worth taking the flood risk? I don't know. Let's go and have a look. Anyway guys, we've driven down about a kilometre from the Semeng intersection and we sort of smack bang in the middle of San Pak Wan here. Got a 7-Eleven there. That way to Sarapi, that's the way I'll be going home. But this is the first left turn that I found uh, yeah, down from where we set off. And it says San Pak Wan, Hangdong, Chiang Mai. So I'm just going to go for a little bit of a walk just to sort of get the vibe of the area. What's it like and would it be a decent place to, to live? But first things first, my general overall first opinions of this place, yeah, it just feels like anywhere else around the outskirts of Chiang Mai. Beautiful place, great, you know, buildings, scenery, awesome stuff. But yeah, in terms of convenience, I can say hands down, it's nowhere near as convenient to get into downtown Chiang Mai as where my house is in Sarapi. Because if you were living down in this direction, for example, you have to go here, if you turn left, do a U-turn, sit at the traffic lights up at the Semeng intersection, turn right, and then you've got uh, two sets of traffic lights near the Ford Mazda dealership, then you've got to go all the way down, and then you're crossing a huge road, a huge road, which could take a long time during busy times. You've got to cross that, and then you're headed past Lotus, uh, traffic lights at the airport, then you've got the traffic lights at Central uh, Airport. So that's, that's sort of how you'd have to go from here to Chiang Mai. Busy times, it's gonna be a 30, 40 minute ride. Walking dogs, very local feel around here. Uh, and I'm not sure if we're gonna come across or encounter any Mubans, but I just wanted to just get an overall vibe of this place. Um, we've actually got some people in the house uh, doing some uh, renovations at the moment, so I actually need to get back for that. A little bit of a local shop here, but I've got 10, 20 minutes. Now that would be a nice house and a piece of land like that. They've raised it up, you can see. Beautiful. Now old school style. And I didn't actually know uh, where San Pak Wan was. Oh, I've driven through it countless times, of course, but I didn't know it was San Pak Wan. And I didn't actually know this was part of Hangdong. I thought it was Sarapi all the way up here, but Sarapi sort of beach, uh, starts you know, a little bit down there. But what a beautiful piece of property there on that piece of land there. Awesome. That's nice as well. So far, yeah, liking, liking the vibes. But if you were moving around here, I mean, I haven't accounted a Muban yet. I think there are some, but it's on the other side of the road, which might still be good, but I'm not looking at that side today. I'm just getting an overall vibe and I'm liking it. I'm liking it. Hoping to see if we can see anything for sale, but that's maybe not likely to happen straight off. 
got this raw piece of land here. Now something like this, it's not going to be cheap, it's a big plot that isn't it? That's, is that a rye I'd guess, maybe, give or take? And it needs raising and it would need here. Yeah, that's multiple millions of that for a piece of land like that. I like the lots of lo little local shops around. One thing that I miss where I live in Sarapi, we don't have any shops in walking distance. We're very convenient to drive into downtown Chiang Mai, extremely convenient, but we don't have any walking distance shops. Bit of a scrapyard over here. Yeah, little restaurant style things, local shops. And yeah, let's just continue, continue the walk. I will be doing a video on the renovation of, uh, of the house, uh, but I'll do that when it's finished. Um, we're doing yeah, quite a few things. And the thing is, one thing that I've encountered recently, um, there's a big difference between prices that you pay for people to do work in Thailand. When we were living in the countryside, you had people who could do it for, you know, they'd work for 500 baht a day, but the quality of work was pretty low pretty low we had an outside bathroom built once and it was cockeyed and not straight and all this um, but now when, you, when you're in Chiang Mai when we did the condo that was a reasonable price uh, but what we're going to be paying for the house renovation is still reasonable but yeah it needs to be reasonable so yeah instead of paying someone 500 a day to do it and doing a bad job you pay a little bit more and they do a better job. I think that's what I was trying to say. So that's what I want to be bear in mind. If you're interested in, as we walk into this uh, Muban estate here, if you're interested in good quality work, it's going to cost more than your standard Thai wage, which is to be expected, uh, as we found with the condo. So, yeah. These are some new for sale houses here, demo house. But is there anybody working? Can we go and have, and have a look? Yeah, it's a beautiful house there. It? Look nice. Decent plot of land. Don't get any prices, unfortunately, guys. House 56, it's called, if you want to Google it. But these are you know, maybe pretty typical houses. I quite like the style, a bit different on the top. <laughs> but they're not very Thai style, are they? They're not very Thai. But they look decent. Don't know the price, unfortunately. And if you guys want to know, yeah, this is the number. The number here for one of these houses. 0984195565. Ban... Oh, I can't read that Yong Yang or <laughs> Tao Yang. That's where they come. Me, uh, Ban, Tao Rai Kam. Ban Lam Lam Li, uh, Sam Lam Pai. Sam Hong Non, Sam 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 and these are four bedrooms. So I might be able to get a price here for you guys, but I'm not sure if we'd be able to have a look in and we're just uh, spare of the moment type happening across this place. Let's see how much it is. Sam Lan Si, 3.4 million. Me, uh, Ki Talang Wa. Okay, so it's 44.8 square Wa, the land. And Ban, Talang uh, Talang Mit. Uh, let's go and have a look at this house, guys. 3.4 million, three bedroom, 44 square wall land. Me, uh, Nam Tuam, my. Me Nam Tuam. And there's no flooding here, how awesome is that? <laughs> so let's go and let's have a quick look. It might be a bit echoey, there's nothing inside. But, uh, yeah, let's, let's go and have a look. Ah, uh, Kopong Kap. Sam Lan Si. 3.4 million baht. You can see where the land is outside. Okay. This is your downstairs bathroom. We've got a shower in here. Me uh, air? Okay. Two air in the in the bedrooms. You've got a bit of a kitchenette area. That's not too bad, is it? And yeah, you don't get much land, but that's just a case in Muban style house in Thailand. You've got enough room for a dining room table here, maybe a TV here and a sofa here, or TV here and a sofa here. Bang up. Okay. Let's go and have a look upstairs. Oh, that's different. Bit of a storage area here. Get home, you can put, things, you put your things inside there. And let's go and look up at the three bedroom. 3.4 million baht here. This is, oh, yes. 
The second bedroom. Hong Long Song, yeah. See the second bedroom here? Sorry about the echo, guys. You've got the local area around you in walking distance of many places. Five sets of traffic lights from downtown Chiang Mai, maybe 20 minutes. And this is your third bedroom. So the only, only small bedroom is only a small style house. Okay. And this is upstairs bathroom, pretty similar to downstairs, slightly bigger. Okay. So this is your master bedroom. Oh, you've got a bit of a balcony. So, uh, okay. Got yourself a bit of a balcony here as well. And yeah, you can see interesting little, little development here. Yeah, you've got water, maybe you could have a washing machine there potentially. Okay. And around here you have your you know, maybe your dressing area, you can have a bit of an office and you've got your second bathroom or your ensuite bathroom here. Uh, cotton cap. Me uh bad see Hong Kong in Tarek. Let's see how much the four bedroom is, if this is 3.4. I don't think it's too bad. That's approximately, but well, it's just slightly over with the exchange rate happening as it is, just over $100,000 for this house. Yeah, not too far from downtown Chiang Mai. I mean, you guys recommended San Pakwan. Don't understand that. Ah, San Lanjet. Okay, so 3.7 million for the four bedroom. We don't need to go and look at that one. Uh, we've had a decent idea of, a, yeah, maybe a typical Muban in San Pakwan. I'd say, as I put my shoes back on, sorry about the inconvenience there. So it's a pretty decent, pretty decent place all in. I wasn't expecting to find it, but we've got the look. Okay, cop and mark up. Uh, uh, John. อ่าส่วนนี้ใช่มั้ยคะเอ่อโอ้ไม่ผู้ชายเมกิงอ๋อผู้ชายเมกิงนิดหน่อยครับอ่าสามารถเล็กๆรายกันได้มั้ยคะ
one thing that you get in a place like this, uh, yeah, you do get the, the local dogs. So. Is it an issue? It can be if they're chasing after you, <laughs> but that doesn't happen often. But not all in, San Paco and my overall vibes, yeah, I think this would be a great place to live. But if you're on rush hour time, getting into Chiang Mai is going to be a nightmare from here because you're on the main Hangdong Road. So if you want to live here and work in Chiang Mai City, or like me, you just love downtown Chiang Mai and want to spend as much time there as possible. It's a difficult one because from here to get into Chiang Mai at any non-busy time, it's going to be not, not, not that bad. But over the past few months, what I've found personally, the, the traffic in Chiang Mai has exploded in you know, busyness, exploded in busyness. And I think that's only going to continue to, to get worse uh, in high season to high season. Not in high season, traffic isn't as bad, but yeah, it's, it's a difficult one. Weighing up the pros and cons of all the areas. Here's great, I could personally live here. I mean, here you've got a local shop just next to you here. You can walk, walk to go and buy a drink, walk for a snack and a meal over there. Feels like a great community, but yeah. Here doesn't have a communal pool, of course. So it swings and roundabouts. What we pay for our house, uh, compared to that house, it, I mean, our house is so much more convenient to get to Chiang Mai and it's, you know, bigger, more land and nicer. So, but we paid three point, about 3.8. So again, I'm just thinking out loud here. What do you think, guys? Do you think San Paquan is great? I like it, but I don't know if it would be a place for me, potentially at some point, but I don't know, <laughs> as we have another local shop here. Anyway, guys, yeah, really appreciate you watching as always. I love the input on the last video. Sorry I haven't had a chance to answer any comments. I said I've got my mum here. We've been, you know, lots of different places. We went up to Doi Pui, the Doi Pui Peak. Uh, up around Doi Sutep, had a look there, took her to where we used to live and up a mountain and all kinds of stuff. So, yeah, she's at home, unfortunately, in only five days. So, wish she could stay longer, but I'll be getting back into the swing of videos, um, yeah, when she, when she unfortunately leaves. But anyway, catch you in the next video. Cheers, guys. Really appreciate you watching.